Hi class, in this video we shall discuss preventive rehabilitation. So, earlier we just said that medicines either preventive, curative or the, the third phase is rehabilitation. So what is preventive rehabilitation? I'm curious, isn't it? Let's see. So preventive rehabilitation deals with methods that prevent primary disability. Now, Many of us are aware of conditions like Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, even these are, you know, Duchenne's syndrome or Duchenne's muscle atrophy. So Duchenne's muscle atrophy or Down syndrome generally affects children and they are genetically transmitted diseases. So either of the parents, if they have you know history of down syndrome in their family then there's very good chance that their offspring might have down syndrome so and if if they already have a child that has down syndrome then the likelihood of the second child having down syndrome is very very high so therefore you know you can counsel these uh, you can counsel such parents about having another child you know, it's their choice basically if they want to raise another disabled child then it is totally up to them but as medics and as rehabilitation engineers you know we should counsel them on the possible hurdles that they're going to face so the i mean i mean a child is precious for everyone i'm not saying that you know uh like a, a, a person with a, a disabled child is any different from a no, from a uh, able child, but the if uh, the sacrifices an individual makes in order to bring such child up is very very high. So the parents should be mentally, you know, prepared on what they are going to face, because after the, after the child comes to this world, the parents should should you know should not regret their decision of having the child, right? So you need to like, con you, you have to counsel them and then, you know, you have to make them aware of what is the economic uh, impact of having such a child going to be on them, whether they are willing to cope up with all the mental stress and so on. So advanced in medicine has like, you know, you have got, you've got uh, various techniques to detect uh, DMD or Down syndrome at a very very early age, uh, early age. So it has reduced the number of cases with Down syndrome, but the survive the so I mean it has reduced the number of cases. Also, medic medicine advances in medicine has reduced the mortality rate. Earlier, a person with brain injury or a spinal cord injury wouldn't survive longer. But now, you know, with our modern day, uh, you know, technological advances in medicine, and I would be very, and I'm very proud to say that as biomedical engineers, we have contributed to this development tremendously. The survival rate of a person who has had a fatal brain injury or a nasty spinal cord injury is very, very high these days. However, these people, they'll be disabled, you know, they'll be paralyzed and they'll have re reduced function. So rehabilitation deals with the morbidity, that is the after effects of such injuries and improving the quality of life. If a person is disabled, then as rehabilitation engineers, what can we do to, you know, make their life better? Also, what can we do to prevent them from getting further disabled? So that is prevent rehabilitation. So the level of prevention is, you know, there are primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. So a healthcare system that attempts to prevent illness is a preventive healthcare, and the one that nurses an individual to an optimal health is called as therapeutic healthcare. You know, you might ask, you might be asked two more questions to differentiate between the two. So this is the difference. So level of prevention is basically primary, secondary, and tertiary. So primary prevention is similar to preventive medicine and it is the measure taken before the onset of any disease. It is designed to promote good health and improve, improve the quality of life. For example, vaccination and, vaccination and immunization, right? So you have children who have BCG vaccines and, you know, polio drops and uh, what is the other one? Vaccine chicken drops, typhoid and so on, right? right? 
we as adults have had shots of hepatitis as well. So these are like preventive rehab, preventive medicine or preventive rehabilitation because you are like trying to prevent a person from being disabled. Polio drops, like you know, if you don't give it, a person if it's a, if he or she is affected with poliomyelitis, then you know they they become severely disabled. So vaccination is primary prevention. Secondary prevention is to arrest the progression of the disease when it is still asymptomatic like when when you know that you have made a diagnosis and you know that there are chances that this particular person might end up you know with further complications if not treated as soon as possible then that is secondary prevention so ergonomic intervention to prevent clinical symptoms in a person with cervical spondylosis so cervical spondylosis is basically it affects your neck right so you have the uh, like the vertebral column or the intercalated discs of the vertebra and all are compressed. So that actually compresses the nerves around your neck region. So you have to make certain adjustments to your posture and you have to make certain adjustments to your day-to-day -day life in order to prevent symptoms of cervical spondylitis. So in your own time, I would like you to go and study what cervical spondylitis is and what are the prevention what are the ergonomic interventions that are taken care that are taken into account for, to prevent the clinical symptoms now tertiary prevention is the me measures taken to minimize the consequences or impact of a disease or injury once it becomes clinically manifested for example a person who's who's on the bed who's like in the bed for the rest of his life or is seated on the wheelchair so they can have issues with pressure sores. So, a paraplegic or a tetraplegic person who is wheelchair bound will often have issues with pressure sores. I mean, you and I have problems sitting in one place for more than five minutes, right? Forget about an hour of class, five minutes reading. I mean, this, this video has been fairly long and I'm sure by the end of it, you guys are just wondering when is this going to end, right? So you and I have problems with watching seven minutes of video. Imagine a person with tetraplegia or paraplegia who has to sit in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. So they'll have pressure sore issues and you have to take, you have to like do clinical manifestation to prevent this pressure sores from progressing further. So that's all we have for this video. I shall see you in the next one. Thank you very much.